all the time, and he had a great back room lounge that he didn't charge for. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I I I I I mean, after all, we are the best. Okay, that was the best look at the All right, we'll try the mic in without it. Yeah. Hey there, Mark. Hey, Okay. All right, everyone hear me, and we want to use the mic. Use the mic. Use the mic. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, this is, we're really professional right now. 
of the year so far, three months, three locations. <laughs> um, but no, uh, this, this, this should be our permanent uh, location. I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. As a matter of fact, we have already covered the cost of the hall to, for tonight with the 50-50. So appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, this is a pretty nice space, as you can see. Lots of space. Some of you are way back there. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, way back I remember there. when we were at Beepo Brady's, the room was about as big as this pillar and maybe this big. If we, if, if, if that. So uh, we're definitely uh, moving up in the world. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here at 7.05 uh, ish. So uh, we'll, uh, we have a pretty short business meeting tonight. Uh, the one thing is we are doing uh, officer elections. So we'll get to that here in a second. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, we do have some upcoming area ham fests. There is the, uh, I don't know how to do this, I keep turning it around. There you go, here we go. Uh, we do have the upcoming Ham Fest, the Falls Ham Fest by Sea Park. It's coming up on April 15th. Um, that's at Emedios up there right out of the valley. Uh, and then, of course, the Tuscaroras Ham Fest that's down in uh, down by New Philadelphia. Uh, that's coming up on April 22nd. Hey, Jason. Yeah. You're missing Toledo Ham Fest coming up Sunday. Sunday. If you want to drive to Toledo for a Ham Fest on Sunday, uh, you can do that as well. Um, so, lots of ham festing opportunities. I grabbed a random, unrelated Google image search of ham fest. So, that's probably not where you'll end up in either case. But um, we have a VE session coming up April 1st, uh, 2023. Um, as a reminder, if you're studying for your general, right? Does that pull the changes out this year, the general? Yes. So, if you're a technician, you're right. studying for general. The new question pool takes effect July 1st. So if you are wanting, if you're a technician, you've been studying for general, you want to do it before the first. There's not a lot of changes, but there's enough with the question pool. Go in April. Yeah, so come in April, and then we'll, we'll have one in June, I think, before. We have a June, yeah. But yeah, before the pool changes. Uh, we're obviously in our membership uh, renewal drive right now. Um, our membership uh, year, so to speak, is April 1st through March 31st. Um, we're only about 58% renewal, not including who may have renewed, renewed in the last 48 hours or so. Uh, Jeff, if you're interested in renewing, we are happy to take all forms of payment. Well, cash, check, credit card. We don't take uh, Bitcoin yet, I guess. Um, not yet. Not yet. We might. Um, but as just a reminder, I mean, we do make 90% of our 90-ish percent of the club's revenue is through dues. I mean, we are a member-supported organization. We don't do a ham fest. We don't do sales except for apparel every once in a while. That makes us a modest amount of money. But by and large, we're a dues-funded organization. So if you're a member and you haven't renewed, we would really love your continued support. If you showed up and you weren't a member and you'd like to join. We would also like you to be a member. So uh, there's no paperwork. You just give Jeff some information and money, and it's less than if you want to join the Eagles. You can. I also have if you want to join the Eagles. I have the forms for that. There's more paperwork with the Eagles, though. So. Uh, one other reminder um, that the the final date for the RF the exposure assessments coming up. 
Um, we talked about this a lot back in 2021 when the rule first came out. Um, if you were a ham, they removed the categorical exemption for the RF exposure assessments. If you were building a new station or changed it after May 3rd, you had to do an assessment. If you haven't changed your station, you, you are regulatorily required to do an assessment and file it away in your paperwork by May 3rd. So hopefully if you've made changes, you've done this. If not, take it takes 10 minutes to do the calculation. It's a good thing to do, um, even if the FCC never shows up in that report. Uh, and this is really, and this is a lot, of, as I said before, this is really as if you cause harm to somebody, um, you're going to want to have this on file. So it's a good thing to, to just kind of do. There's a couple links there. The ARRL has a uh, page on it. I wrote a walkthrough calculator that can help you step by step and, you know, go through what you actually need to, um, to uh, do the calculations without having to know a bunch of stuff in advance. About how the Is your calculator the packet warrior? Okay. Okay. Uh, any other announcements? Russ? The bus trip to Hamvention is a no go this year. Yeah, so if you didn't hear Russ, uh, we were not able to find a large enough bus for rent. You couldn't find any bus. There was no buses. <laughs> Apparently, no buses have exist in Northeast Ohio. No, we were kind of late. For price. For what? I mean, you want to pay a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, for, for, yeah. I mean, and and then and, and, and historically, the trip just the this trip just doesn't support the cost that we were seeing. The reasonable price buses that have been used in the past were not available. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, if anybody does want to ride a bus, I am aware that cars, the Cuyahoga Amateur Radio Society, they are doing a bus and they have a pickup in front of it. Okay, so pick up in Brunswick. Um, obviously, if people are interested in car viewing, that's a possibility as well. So, um, uh, Jason, yeah, Dave. A suggestion uh, on that, since you brought it up. Uh, I don't know if it's easy to do on our website or not, but uh, maybe set up a carpooling site for people who want to try to call and pool. Just a suggestion. I don't know if you give you that easily. If not, it's not worth it. It's not easy. I mean, I don't know if there's a service, a site that people can use, but it's something we can look into. We got a couple of months. But yeah. All right, treasurer's report. Okay, uh, starting uh, balance twenty nine eleven eighty two. Uh, we do have uh, the uh, fee for the uh, club uh, new club meeting hall rental. Uh, also, fee for all star uh, virtual uh, hosting. We did get uh, sixty-one dollars for the last uh, 50 50 raffle, and we did take in fifteen forty-eight ninety-three in membership dues. Uh, Leaves a grand total of forty-four thirty-nine fifty-five, with eleven hundred dollars allocated to uh, repeater replacement and maintenance. Any questions on the treasurer's report? If not, I'll take a motion. Motion. Stefan, second. Yeah. Ryan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Who second? Uh, Ryan. K5 uh, RFG. K5 RFG. All right. Um, the main the main business tonight is um, officer elections. Um, we do have, um, as we as was discussed in the mailing list. Um, we do have a slate of officers um, that have been nominated. Uh, there is, there was no other nominations that came in over email. So instead of having a ballot tonight, since there's only one candidate, um, this is essentially a consensus of approval. Uh, if you approve this, the president will be Gary. AACS, he's returning to the, uh, the throne, so to speak. Um, uh, Nick, KD8SLG. Uh, Where's his tuxedo? <laughs> Said he was having a tuxedo. Oh, the, the, the that's Silver it. Game Amateur Radio Association tuxedo. There you go. Oh, that's that's you know, not like, that's what we do for field day. We'll get the, the tuxedo t-shirt. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Field day. Field day tuxedo. Field day tuxedo. 
Uh, Jeff WATB is going to be the loan officer holdover uh, for one more year, um, but uh, we're going to be looking for treasurer next year. Uh, and the secretary is going to be uh, Mike Shafter. I saw him. There you go. Oh, there he's behind the camera for me. Uh, KKQWE. So, um, with that, uh, Dave has a question. I'll make a motion to vote on a slate of uh, uh, nominated elections. Okay. Did you have something before that, Bob? Yeah, I was going to say that uh, I move that we install them by acclamation of the club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So on a slate. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two, two of the same motion. So essentially, yeah. um, this is the slate of candidates for up for election. We have a motion. Bob will consider here as a second. Wait, wait. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Oh, you're screwed. No. <laughs> no discussion. You want to discuss you on your own behalf? You want to discuss on your own behalf? You want to discuss on your own behalf? I, I, I just want everyone to know before you vote that uh, I'm the one a week ago on the barometer that, uh, that got the whole the dates mixed up. I had no idea what day it was. was That's like, perfect That's for a you. president. And that was the <laughs> problem. That's normal with you, Gary. You just got to read off a prompter. What's your point? <laughs> What's your point? Yeah, right. Yeah, we do. I have one. Let me know if you want to use it. Dave, second by Bob. I guess discussion's over. Yeah, discussion's over. Is there any further discussion on no, the motion no. that has been seconded? It closed it up. It closed the discussion. All right. All those in favor of the motion to elect this as a slate of candidates by acclamation. Aye. 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 Anybody want to replace one of these people by voting no? There you, right. you go. There you go. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I, do, I do want to thank everybody uh, who, who has stepped up to run the club this year. It really is a good thing to do for amateur radio. Um, you know, so we're really hoping that in future years we're going to get some more people who are interested. You know, if we get a good cadre of people circulating through different leadership positions it really helps out the club we get a lot of people who want to help and we can do less work really you know you don't have to be you know pinnacle of an rf engineer to be to help organize people as a club uh, we need people people as much as we need technical people so that's my service spiel um just as a reminder um the, the club is led by an executive committee uh, starting on April 1st, then, now that we've approved this slate of candidates, this slide has conveniently and magically <laughs> appeared. Um, wow. But just so everyone knows, the elected officers are part of the executive committee. So that's Gary, Nick, Jeff, um, and Mike. Um, there are three trustees. The trustees are representatives of the members, um, and that's Bob Bone, W8IJG, uh, Dave, NT8D. I didn't see Doug here tonight. Oh, he had Skywarn. Yeah, right? Skywarn. Yeah, he's not here. Uh, Doug Hunter, K8J, and H. And then um, by the bylaws, then there's the past president if they choose to serve. And I promised Gary I would choose to serve at least for five minutes. Now that he's voted in, then I'm out. Um, and then the technical, the tech manager, who also happens to be Gary at the moment, so he gets an asterisk. He doesn't actually get to vote twice. But. So, Are you kidding? I'm, I'm not kidding. You can't stack the vote. It's one vote per. Thank you. Gotcha. Um, so, this, so this is the leadership of the club. Um, obviously, if you have any issues, please come to anyone on the executive committee. Um, this is the committee that by the bylaws is empowered to largely transact business on behalf of the club so that we can keep business meetings short and have fellowship and technical meetings rather than sit here and debate all of the business of the club. So these guys do a lot behind the scenes to keep the club running. So uh, it's not a ton of effort, but it is some work and the work that's done is, is very much appreciated. So uh, let's see here, uh, technical committee report, not a whole lot here. Um, we do need to start talking about talking about field day. Um, there's two things. Um, we are looking for a pool of volunteers like we do every year who are going to head up the field day work. Um, 
I did commit to Gary and Nick. Now that I'm not the president, why am I still talking? Why aren't you up here? <laughs> This is the finish. Oh, this is the finish. All right. Yeah, finish of your turn. All right. All right. No, I, I did. I, so I did. I did promise Nick and Gary that I would lead up the technical work this year. Um, but we were, we are looking for the usual set of volunteers um, for this year. We are probably going to be returning to the Legion Hall in Rittman, um, just because we have a good relationship there. We can spend the night. Um, that might be. We might look at other locations in the future, but at the moment, that's. We're going to go with what we've been doing. Um, last year, last year, a couple of people had expressed interest in maybe building some different antennas, maybe some more band purpose built antennas. Um, the club's open to that, um, but if you're interested in doing that, we need to do that sooner than later because we have to buy the parts, assemble the antenna you want to build, and test it. Um, we definitely do not want to be deploying a test antenna, an untested antenna on field day. Um, so if you were interested in, because we have the band pass filter, so we could build some, I, we could build some fan dipoles, we could do some other things. But um, if you're interested in that, let me or Nick or Gary know so we can get people together who really want to do that because we need to set it up and test it in the early June time frame at the absolute latest. Um, Pieces for antennas at retailers will, like Balin's, for example, will be sold out in the run-up to field day. It happens every year. So uh, we need to get a jump on it if we're interested in that. Um, that was really all I had for prepared uh, information. Is there any new business from the floor? Going once, going twice. Sold. All right. Um, next meeting, April 20th, 7 p.m. right here. Uh, we're going to try to have the doors open by 6.15, 6.30. Um, a couple of logistics items before we close. Um, we do have to put the table, these four tables that are up front, we had to move them back off of the floor up here. So a couple people could help us with that. Um, and if you did eat and you made a mess, we do have to vacuum it up. The vacuum is somewhere we can get it, but um, just we have, if we make a mess, we have to clean that up. So right. just kind of keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, bathrooms are over there in the corner. And um, if you're interested, um, we, we the so as I said this in email, but just to reinforce the point, you can't get any, you can't buy anything here um, unless we either staff it as a bar, which we're not going to do for meetings, or um, if you join the Eagles, you can go through that little door with the sign on it that says members only. And there is a bar straight through that wall. And you can buy a beer, pop, drinks, things like that. It's 30 bucks a year to join plus. Correct. It's, 30, it's, a, it's, it's $65, 35 administration and $30 a year. Yeah. And then <clears throat> it's like when I went over there, it's a dollar for a pop. So. I'm a member. I do join. So you're subsidizing. You're basically subsidizing the pump. <laughs> so I have a couple apps. If some people are interested in doing that, a couple people expressed interest in being able to walk over and buy a drink. Uh, we are allowed to bring food and beverage in here, but if you're not a member, you you just can't buy it here. So. No other question. I was going to ask you about the membership, and then so you pay the membership, but you still got to buy whatever you're going to buy over there. Yeah, right. So you have to need the membership, and then you're still on top of that. I was curious with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like every social club. I mean, there's a yeah. there's a low maintenance fee for the club in general, and then you're pretty much buying the drink at cost. Yeah. yeah. That's how the VFW and all those places. Lions, are. everyone. Does Lions, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Tigers and bears don't mind. So. Any other business from the floor? If not, Russ, you're up. Now, I do have to state that after Russ awards the first prize for 50-50, we do have this lovely mug from Basu Communications. This is where we bought the repeater nice. from. Now, we only got one mug, and I thought that if we bought two repeaters, we should have got two mugs. Yeah. We only got one mug. But second prize for tonight's 50-50 is a Kenwood authorized dealer mug from nice. Basu Communications. So we can break it into multiple That's pieces. That's a bonus plan. Just throwing it out. Go for it. 
What's the cut, Russ? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, Russ is pounding. Mark was pressuring me to ask you. Well, no, the 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 I think the ticket guy would already have that. We collected one hundred and seventy-five dollars. So So what's the take, Russ? The is eighty-five dollars. Okay. So there's five dollars left over. I'm gonna put that with the cup. So whoever wins the cup gets an extra five bucks. Five and a cup. The 50-50 winner gets eighty-five, and the second place gets the cup plus five dollars, which the five dollars is clearly less value than the mug. Clearly. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right, ready? Ready. Yeah. Good. Seven, three, seven, five, nine. Four. What the heck? Oh. 594. 594. 594. Did you get it, Gary? Yeah. No way. 737, 594? Of course you got oh, it. Oh, man. Cheated. Go up there and collect your money. Oh. It's Rick. It's Rick. It's the new president, Rick. That's the perks of office. What's the next prize? All right, for the irreplaceable, priceless Bassett communication. Irreplaceable. Priceless. Seven three seven five seven six. Five seventy six. Five seven. Oh yeah, we got it. Rick, on behalf of my wife, I would like you to. I like to thank you for taking that mug out of my basement. <laughs> it is, and it's going to him now. Yeah. And once again, my, my wife thanks you for digging out of my basement. I keep moving it around. Thank you, Thanks, Russ. We're losing tickets, free zone. And we did pay for the whole. Yeah. Yay! 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 So, See how easy it is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is. I mean, this, this might be. How many people do we actually have here? Because this might be our biggest. Nineteen. Nineteen. I think there's nineteen on this side. Ten. Sixteen. Look at the wrong, look at the sign. 19, 20, 22, 25, 28, 33, 30, 38, 42, 45. We have 50 people. I'm pretty sure awesome. this is our biggest meeting ever. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. So. Good job, everybody. Next one, they're getting your money. <laughs> what? They had, you could see there was a lot of room in that room. Yeah. Which is this room there? Yeah. You could, if you counted the tables, they had a lot of places, a lot of places to sit. Who's the next person up? I'm sorry, what? Oh, who's who's doing the first presentation? Yeah. So, so we're uh, up to the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Scott. Second. Second. We'll give the Andrew back there. Who was first? Scott. Scott. And then Andrew, second. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting? Aye. 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 Anybody want to meet longer? Like More meeting. Okay. We are um, meeting longer. All right. So we're adjourned here at 7:30. Um, there was a, there is a short change in, in presentation. Um, I was going to talk about my HF antenna build, and I was sitting at my computer at 3:30 today trying to put the presentation together, and I gave up, and I had too much stuff to do. So Nick. Where he went, there he is. You were sitting, would you quit moving? If you're over there, I'm gonna put you. No, Nick, uh, Nick, I'm still, 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 I'
All right. So Nick volunteered um, to talk about uh, re net repeater etiquette. Um, we'll cover that more second part. But first off, um, Jerry is going to talk about the uh, Skywarn protocols. Jerry. All right, Jerry. Okay. He's not talking about our today. It's going to be Nick's doing something. Nick is talking tonight. Second, Jeff's next month. Oh, next talking month. about gotcha. RFI. And the show. My apologies. I didn't hear that. Yeah. All right. With that, uh, give us a couple minutes to change out laptops and we'll uh, get started. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that the mic keep using? Yeah. It, it sounded good. I listened. This isn't actually my face. That's okay. You won't recognize me. This is my winter look. That's fine. Wait till next month. Wait. Wait, wait. I I I I really do enjoy it. We work
Okay, guys, we're going to get started here. My first official act is to call the uh, uh, the uh, meeting back to order. Not that it's a meeting, but the presentation back to order. Again, uh, Jerry, I uh, appreciate you doing this tonight. And... Uh, I don't know how many how many people have uh, Skyworn stuff. Yeah, a few of us. Okay, very good. So uh, uh, Jerry's going to talk about protocols, and uh, should be interesting. Oh, good evening. Uh, glad you are all here this evening. Uh, this presentation assumes no prior knowledge of, of Skyworn program. So, and it's not Skyworn training. It's just how Skyworn yet should operate. <coughs> The Skywarn program is sponsored by the National Weather Service. The National Weather Service has a memoranda of understanding with the ARRL and ARIES to provide the Skywarn program. A memoranda of understanding sets out the general relationship between ARIES and an ARIES partner at the national, state, or local level. Other partners that have MOUs with ARIES include the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the American Red Cross, and the Salvation Army. The National Weather Service conducts Skywarn classes to develop a core of trained, and I am stressing trained, severe weather spotters. Trained Skywarn spotters are a first response group. You are not first responders, you are a first response group invaluable to the success of an early warning storm effort by reporting actual weather conditions in your own communities. Again, I stress strange spotters can identify changing conditions through subtle visual cues that can go undetected on radar. A perfect example of this was Palm Sunday about four years ago in Richland County. Scott remembers this very well. Uh, <laughs> We were, we were under the lowest threat level possible in, our, in northern Ohio. Uh, a Skywarn spotter in Crestline stated on the Skywarn net that he had seen a funnel cloud. Uh, this was reported to the National Weather Service. Uh, they said that they hadn't seen, they couldn't see it on radar, but issued a, a tornado warning for Richland County. Because of that Skywarn spotter, a tornado warning was issued that the Weather Service didn't see. Between five and 10 minutes later, on the Skywarn net, you heard emergency traffic, emergency traffic. We have a tornado near, uh, near Rocket Chevrolet in Shelby. Because of that early warning and it being a Sunday too, uh, there were no injuries in that tornado, even though it did a lot of structural damage. EMs without Skywarn training should monitor the net and only transmit when they can offer needed help. The reason for that is if you don't know what you're looking at in cloud formations, you could give uh, inaccurate information. Uh, talking to Doug Hunter, KEHJNH, uh, whom many of you know, he said the number one misreported <coughs> event that they get at 911 is for funnel clouds when they're actually looking at a scud cloud, which is subcumulus underdecking. And if you've had Skywarn training, you can tell the difference. So uh, the reason that if, if you don't know what you're looking at, you can become a hindrance to the net. So if you don't have the training, stay out of the way. Of course, many of you know this, many hams are registered spotters and they provide a valuable service to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and local national weather services throughout the country. Uh, so much so that in 1999, the National Weather Service in Aries created Skywarn Recognition Day. It's always the first uh, weekend in December and it celebrates the contributions to public safety and the National Weather Service by amateur radio operators during threatening weather. What is a Skywarn net? Well, Skywarn net is a specialized net. And a specialized net is a net created to serve specific agencies that are served by ARIES. They are customized to fit the needs of an individual partner. Now, a Skywarn net is going to have different needs, say, from a net 
that the American Red Cross would need. Yeah, uh, sky worn net is for like severe weather. Uh, you're monitoring con changing conditions or you know, all that. Where a Red Cross net more than likely is going to be set up to serve as a shelter for people who are affected by an incident and uh, deals a lot with uh, the needs of that shelter or logistics. What is the purpose of a sky worn net? <clears throat> The rapid communication of accurate information during extreme weather situations, and I stress again, accurate information, that's where your sky warm training comes in. A severe weather net is started when severe weather threatens or is present in the, and I left, you know, fill in the blank for your area, county area where the National Weather Service has issued a severe weather warning. When the National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning, it is considered an emergency condition due to the threat to life and property. Net control during a Skywarn net or any emergency net is not a one person job. There's a lot of things going on during a Skywarn <laughs> net or an emergency net. Uh, specifically, we're talking about Skywarn so uh, the, the Skywarn net operator uh, needs to, you know, there's a lot going on like monitoring weather conditions, monitoring the National Weather Service, being a liaison to the National Weather Service, either on the six meter backbone or the DMR uh, talk group. Uh, lots of things going, taking check-ins, uh, you know, taking weather reports. So it's more than one person can actually handle so uh, there should actually be a net controller, a backup net controller, and a liaison to the other net, to the National Weather Service net. A good example of why there should be a backup was July 20th of last year. Uh, I live uh, on the county line between uh, Wayne and Holmes County, just south of Shreve. July 20th last year, uh, we had severe weather. Um, we had, I had a fun, I saw, you know, started to see rotation and I had to take shelter so I could no longer handle the net. So, you know, there you go. If you don't have a backup, the net just ends. So, uh, that, that's why you need a backup. Also, I want to comment that an emergency situation is really not a good time to be learning net control. I want to encourage each and every one of you to get some net control experience. Uh, you know, when you're home, pretend that you're being net control, uh, log and make notes and things. Um, volunteer to do net control for a net. Net control, good net control operators are trained, they're not born. And the more that you become, be a net control operator, the more comfortable you will become with it and confident in your skills. Yep. That being said, any licensed operator may start a severe weather net. However, you, if you are inexperienced at it, in certain situations, if you're having like a tornado or something, it may be advantageous to turn that net over to a more experienced operator. Uh, when you're starting the net, make an announcement that the net is active. Provide information about the current weather situation, summarizing the actual warning issued by the National Weather Service. For example, uh, this is uh, your call sign. I am serving as net control for the directed uh, Wayne County, Wayne, Medina, whatever county. Skywarn Net, the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning until 8 p.m and then make a pause. Then ask the following question. Are there any stations in uh, that are currently experiencing any of the following conditions? And these following conditions will always have priority on the net. Uh, I know winter weather skywarn nets are rare, but occasionally they do happen. A few years ago, we had an event called uh, Snowmageddon. And uh, so uh, you need to know these, even though we're heading out of winter. Winds over 50 miles per hour, snowfall rates of two inches per hour or greater, 
freezing precipitation, <coughs> sleet, damage caused by wind, snow, or ice, and then uh, pause for a response to see if any stations are experiencing any of these conditions. Now for the ones that we're coming into, coming into spring and summer, priority conditions are winds in excess of 50 miles per hour, flash flooding or flooding in progress, hail one half inch in diameter or larger, which that is dime size or larger, wall clouds showing signs of rotation, funnel <laughs> clouds, or tornadoes, and again, pause to see if there are any stations reporting any of these conditions. <laughs> Depending on current weather conditions, net control may ask for damage reports. If no stations respond to any of those conditions, uh, net control <coughs> will ask stations to check into the net using your call sign, your name, and location. And it's important that you use your location <coughs> because uh, Maybe I know where you live, or the net control operator knows where you live, but people listening may not, including the National Weather Service, and they do listen to nets. Hold your comments until net control asks for them. Once the check-ins are received, the net control operator will go down the list and ask for a brief description, and I do mean brief description of weather conditions at their location. An example of that is, this is uh, KE8ABC. We're having heavy rain and storm. Back to net. Remember that net control will be coming back to you for comments, so think about what you're going to say. It's not a time to be act surprised when net control comes back to you and asks you for a summary of what's going on at your location. And once again, please be short and to the point with your traffic. And also make sure that you leave a pause after each transmission for emergency traffic to break in because weather conditions can change rapidly. If a funnel cloud or a tornado is reported, then that will go into emergency mode. Priority state will be given to stations reporting and tracking funnel cloud or tornado activity and all other stations should hold your traffic until cleared by net control. As updates are received from the National Weather Service, they're passed on to the net. Uh, when you're ending the net, after all warnings have ex expired and net control has received no further reports of severe mm -hmm. weather, the net will end. Net control should provide an update of current and expected weather conditions as the net is closed. I want to remind something to everybody, this goes for all emergency nets, uh, any incidents, uh, anytime we're in a public service capacity as amateur radio operators, amateur radio is not a secure method of communication, uh, nor can it be, according to FCC Part 97.113, Section 4. Uh, the only exception to this is the control commands for an amateur satellite. You do not know who might be listening. Uh, it can be the National Weather Service, it can be law enforcement, it can be the media, uh, you know, your local elected officials. I mean, you do not know who is listening. So it is very important that you be professional. That means you act in a skilled and highly competent manner. Uh, it's It looks bad on us if we don't act in a professional manner. Uh, in some of the ways you can do that, Use standard ITU phonetics. Uh, don't use these creative QC phonetics when you're uh, in an emergency situation <clears throat> during an incident or any public service capacity. Send all numbers as individual numbers. Transmit only facts. If you have to guess for some reason, make sure that you make it clear that it is just a guess or an estimate. Try to speak at a normal rate. Control the tone of your voice and be as calm as possible. Uh, if you speak at a normal rate and, and keep the tone of your voice calm, it will help others to remain calm as well. Avoid words or phrases that carry strong emotions, uh, like uh, there's horrific damage or uh, there's people torn to bits. You know, there's, that's not the, you know, not a good thing to do. 
Uh, another thing, do not become a source of information for the press. Uh, if anyone from the media comes up to you and tries to talk to you, ask you questions, refer them to someone who is authorized to speak for the incident or the event. And uh, now, you know, a public information officer may ask you to speak, but that will only be about the amateur radio response itself. And another <clears throat> thing is, is you, with all these cell phones, cameras, uh, stream, live streaming on Facebook and that, anyone can be a journalist. So make sure that you act in a professional manner. Do not criticize on the air. That means anyone who is on the net as an operator, event organizer, incident commander, whatever, uh, on the air is not the place for that and it should be done uh, off the air. And uh, also if you're in an incident, in a, in a, this is especially true for um, shelter reasons or with a lot of injuries, do not transmit personal information or personally identifying information about any of the part, anyone who is affected by the incident or the event. And that's all I have. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And uh, <laughs> cool. um, if if your local uh, Skywarn net is not up. Uh, you can feel free to check in on either on the six meter backbone or the DMR talk group. That's 313932. Um, but they rec ask that you do so through a repeater if you can instead of through a hotspot. And uh, if there is a local Skywarn net up, uh, report that to your Skywarn net and have one person report that to the National Weather Service. Forgot that. Okay, thank you. with the slides as everybody else. Can you guys uh, see that back there? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mike. Oh. Who said no? No, we said it. Yeah, we All can right, hear I'll you. try harder, Nick. We see net I quit. Huh? Net I quit. Net to kit. Everybody likes to make up words these days, so do I. So, net etiquette. 
And I, I started this talking about nets, mostly the UHF, VHF nets that we go on, but then it kind of expanded out into, well, it's also repeater netiquette, and it's also just kind of radio etiquette, okay? So, but I'm still calling it netiquette because I like the sound of it. There we go. All right, best practices. Let me preface this by saying a few things, all right? One, there's no manual for this, so I didn't, you know, I'm not grabbing this from somewhere. These aren't rules or regulations. This is sort of my take on things. Um, so keep that in mind. Your mileage may vary, okay? But I'm in a lot of nets as a participant, and I've done a few as NCOs too. So I'd like you to uh, respect my perspective, if you will. All right. Um, I don't put a lot of stuff up on the board behind me. No pictures, no moving things, not a lot of words, because I prefer if you listen to me instead of looking at the slides. <laughs> so there's not going to be a whole lot up there. But uh, best practices. All right. So let's start with listening. Okay. So uh, we're all on the radios. We listen a lot. Um, before you push the talk, See what's going on on the radio before you start talking, okay? Um, how many of you have uh, rolled out of bed at 7.08, turned on the radio, say, I got to get in the barometer net? You hear nothing for two seconds, so you push to talk and you throw out your call sign. And then one of the guys comes to you and says, what's your emergency? Okay, you just checked in during that little pause for the emergency or priority traffic, or you stepped in on somebody else's time slot. Uh, so just listen for a couple of seconds before you start talking. And of course, that always goes for any time you get on the radio. Um, you hear a QSO on the radio. Listen in for a second. See if you want to. Uh, what are you guys whispering about there? Excuse me? <laughs> you have something for the group? Uh, actually, no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so listen in on a QSO, okay? couple guys are talking about quantum physics or Star Trek or Star Wars and you have nothing to add to the conversation maybe don't okay but if you do jump in okay if I get on the radio and there's a couple guys talking about how to program their FTM 400s you I'm, I'm in like Flynn I'm gonna be all over that conversation okay so just listen for a few minutes and see if you want to get involved or not and uh, well there's another angle there we'll get to that as well but uh, you want, if somebody wants to jump in on something and uh, see who's here that I can use an example, NEWS or TNF, those guys have little HF things going on with each other. So sometimes TNF will jump in and say, hey, uh, do you guys mind if I uh, give a call out for NEWS for a second because this is going on on HF and you really need to know about it. Of course you say, sure, go ahead. So just be polite, be friendly with each other, okay? Respect each other. You're going to hear that word a lot today. All right, pause. Uh, let the repeater drop. Listen for the beep, okay? It's a little harder these days. The new repeater is very, very quiet, isn't it? What do you, well, why are you giggling? Oh, I'm laughing because after I installed it, I thought it was broken because there wasn't a line behind it anymore. There's just nothing, I mean, you, you literally have, you have to listen for that. If you're in a car, if you're a loud environment, you cannot hear what it breaks. So you, you've got to listen for it. And uh, why do you want to do that? Well, the repeater needs to recycle. Would that be a good word for it? Uh, reboot, if you will. It needs to cut off between transmissions because it's a linked system. So the other systems that are linked in there that are listening for that, if they don't hear it, they keep going. And they time out. There's a timeout timer in there. Ours is a little bit longer than some. So... If you're uh, some of you guys on uh, W8OKE, Andy back there, we all right, can, they're a little bit shorter. Every time out, every barometer okay, every there you go. The so if, if you don't leave enough time in there, uh, other people get cut off, then it gets all scrambled, a little bit messy. You get people talking over each other that don't need to because of that. Okay, so, so let it drop, leave some space between your transmissions, it lets other people get in there. Uh, let's see other links get hooked up. 
I'll have some more about that in a second, too. It allows other people to jump in, too. If somebody's got to go break, break, there's an emergency, a Skywarn emergency, right? Okay, they need a second to get in there. You got to let it drop. NCOs, listen to them, please. <laughs> that's, that's all I got for those guys. Um, you know, don't, all right, here, pet peeve. Don't talk over the preamble, okay? When, when someone's about to start an at and they've got their, their minute and a half or two minutes of things set up there, okay? And you're just about ready to go and then somebody comes in and jumps in it. Ah, it throws, throws me off for a couple of minutes. I don't know about, how about you, Gary? Does that throw you off? Nothing throws yeah. you off, does it? No, 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 no. I have infinite patience. You're, you do have <laughs> infinite patience. You're, <laughs> you're pervious to that. Um, so no quick keying. Uh, excuse me. No quick keying. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It happened so fast. No, no quick keying. Quick keying. I'm getting there. <laughs> All right. I, I, I get you. Listen to the NCOs, okay? If they're asking for mobiles or short times. Be mobile or short time. I know that's somebody's pet peeve. You guys will find my hesitations are very circular, but they do come around to a point. Um, <laughs> if, if NCO is asking for general check-ins, that's the time for general check-ins. If they're asking for a specific person, ask for a specific person. If they ask everybody to be quiet for a minute to let the repeaters reset, be quiet for a minute to let the repeaters reset. <clears throat> okay? Um, some subtleties from NCOs, okay? To check in. And the NCO has to ask you three or four times for your call sign because it's noisy, the signal's bad. First off, just don't keep saying KD8SLG, KD8SLG, KD8SLG because they're not getting it. B's, C's, D's, E's, G's all sound the same, okay? And as Jerry said, use the proper phonetics, okay? If somebody's NCO is asking you again and again for your call sign, break it down. Kilo Delta 8 Sierra Lima Gulf. Okay? Um, Slower than that. All right. Now, <laughs> Gary's little, special. So you got to put it down. Here, here's, here's, a like little, here's, here's a little secret. Okay? <laughs> if an NCO tells you, you know, your signal's really hard to hear, it's a really rough copy, I'm going to translate that for you. When I call on you, don't talk for three minutes. Please, okay? Because if that signal is not getting any better, you're going to be given the you're going to be given the net three minutes of static, all right? And these guys are too nice to say, "Hey, don't call back." So you know, take a take a cue there, if you would, please. All right. Um, quick keying, okay? That goes back to pausing, right, Fred? Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. And uh, here's the thing, though. Um, if uh, if somebody's quick keying in, in there, should you quick key in response to them, or should you leave a pause every time you talk? Lead by example. Thank you very much, okay? Be a leader, not a follower. Just because somebody else is doing some bad behavior doesn't excuse you doing it, too, to try to get in there. People start yelling at each other about things. Getting in there and yelling with them is not going to help the situation. All right. Check-ins. How many of you have heard my check-in before? There you go. Back of the bus. Yeah. Back of the bus. W-A-A-K-O-C. This is Kilo Delta 8, Sierra Lima Gulf, KD-8 SLG, Nick in Orville. Hey, that's 10 to 12 seconds, guys, every time I do it. So why do you think I do it that way? Is it because I like the sound of my own voice? Yes, yes, yes? no. No. <laughs> no, I do not, okay? Yes, you do. No, I don't. Oh, that's nice. Um, okay, so repetition. I do it the same way all the time. The NCOs can recognize that. They can pull that. There's a lot of information in there. So if somebody's talking over me at the beginning, someone's talking over me at the middle, somebody's talking over me at the end, MTO can pull out 
SLG and Nick and know who it is. Or they can pull out KD8 Orville and know who it is. Okay? And if you do it the same way every time and you throw all that information in there, you're giving the NCOs a better chance to identify you without having to slow things down. If barometer netizens, if you hear only, hope I'm not in a collision, who is it? K-8-A-G-W, three words in a collision. All right, no call sign, no, all right? He's got a tagline, okay? I, I'm not saying everybody needs to go home tonight and start figuring out, what am I going to say so I always get recognized, okay? But you see what I'm getting at, okay? There's, there's a way to get recognized, and this is coming from both someone who checks in and somebody who listens to people. So, and I'm going to reiterate Jerry's comment, proper phonetics, okay? Nobody ate purple zucchini downtown. <laughs> And eight PZD, right? Okay, that's great when you're having a chat at two in the morning on the repeater, but don't do that for nets, please. Um, you get an ear for it, and as Jerry said, uh, NCOs practice at it. And when you're listening for something like the proper phonetics, that just doesn't work for you. Um, hey, 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 the, the other thing, the other thing too, with with what he's talking about with checking pacing is those of us who have done, especially like the club nets and the barometer nets and the beacon net. Like, chances are, if you're a regular, we know your voice. So if you give us enough to hear the voice, we'll probably know who you are too. Yeah. Which goes into the, you know, don't don't throw your call sign out at six thousand verbal words a minute, like. If I if all I hear is Nick, but he's in the clear, I, I'll recognize his voice and I can just key him in without rechecking. So just so that's another thing too is we we actually know your voice. Yeah. Can I follow up on that, Jason? Yeah. Please. Um, yeah. The, this this seems to happen when people double, and they hear somebody doubles with them, and then they come in and check in again because they got doubled with. Them. Wait to hear and see if the NCO got you because they might have you already. And when you come back in, you're doubling with the next person. All right. So if you realize you've doubled with somebody, don't panic. Wait to see if the NCO's got you, because he'll probably let you know before he goes on with the next thing. Check in once per round. There, I, I re that's what I reduced it to. What, uh, what, Brian? Also, was the net control operator make sure that you go down the list of who you've got. Yeah. I do yeah. hear that from so, time to time, and they don't recognize you. You're getting a slide ahead, Brian, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, all right? Yep. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit on NCO and net procedures on the next slide. Right now, it's, like I said, it's gonna <clears throat> circle around and come back to a point. So, yeah, please pause yeah. during the PowerPoint. <clears throat> um, all right, now let me get back on it. Uh, NCO reads back list, and you're not on it. Okay, this is this is another pet peeve. Okay, so if I get ten people checking in at once, right, and I get nine of them, but I know I missed one, and then I say, "Hey guys, I missed one. Who was it?" And then six people check in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's. That goes down to the bottom for respect there, okay? Respect each other, all right? And respect the NCOs. All right, let's, let's move a slide ahead. There we go. NCOs and Nets, we are blessed here at the Sara Club, okay? With not only quality NCOs, but also a pretty good number of them, okay? Um, you know, we don't have... Uh, we don't have trouble getting somebody to work a shift, as work a shift makes it sound so formal. But you know what I mean. Cover cover an hour here or there, okay? As a matter of fact, sometimes people even offer to do it. Isn't that right, Gary? Sometimes people sometimes they do. Feel sorry for us people. Okay. <laughs> and um, our our nets are pretty pretty monstrous overall. And one of the slides I'm going to show you is a bubble chart in a minute or two. Of, of another one, but well, you know, speaking that we go coast to coast every Wednesday and Sunday night. 
Uh, this morning, Alaska. You gotta love having Alaska checking in at 3 a.m. local time or 4 a.m. local time. Frozen radio. So, you know, those links are fun. Uh, we're out there. We're we're popular out there for a number of reasons. Since we have the 48496, the All Star link up there. When uh, W2JLS, John and I used to globe trot. Anybody remember that? Back in the day, we'd go out at night and we'd hook up to other uh, communities. Okay, I used to find those sites that we would visit by going through allstarlink.org, finding who had the most connections and who had the most recent um, QSOs. So you might find somebody with 20 connections, but nobody's talked on that repeater link for two weeks. Okay, nobody's going to be there. Then you find somebody like us. All right, they may have eight or ten links hooked up, and but there's almost always somebody talking on our repeater, so it's very recent. So we get a lot of traffic from that from people coming in because we have popular nets and we have really good NCOs. Now, here's the thing. All right, all the nets and all the NCOs are a little bit different. Okay, don't don't be thinking because Dave does something one day that Fred's going to do it the next day that. And Gary's going to do it the following day, and Javen's going to do it the same way, okay? These guys are all individuals, and they all kind of have their own little things, all right? Same with the difference between nets, okay? Just because on the beacon net, I get on there a half hour early, and I line up 30 check-ins before the net even starts, don't expect that to happen in the morning on the barometer net, okay? Just because you get in there at, at 6.40 and say, hey, I'm here, don't think you're on the list already. Follow me? This is a very specific example. Now, um, some nets just start from zero, okay? <laughs> Dustin and I, when we do the beacon net here, we do this whole pre-show thing and get everybody set up. When we do the beacon or the boredom breaker net on Wednesday afternoons, we start that from a flat zero. We don't talk to anybody for a half hour before that net starts because they're savages. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And then we'll get 20 check-ins in the first three minutes, and it's smooth as silk again. All right, but every net does it a different way. The bolo net, right, on, on Monday nights, you get on DMR Talk Group 311070, you key up the repeater on uh, W8WO's digital repeater, you, get, you show up on the digital dashboard. When Jerry or, or Doug starts the net, they just see who keyed up in the last half hour, and that's their starting list. So eight or nine people are already already checked into the net, ready to go. Three or four more. The net's over in 20 minutes. It was a blast, right? Good times? Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of digital nets. I, I entertain on them. And they they vary widely. Some net logger, who's familiar with the net logger? Okay. Um, you know, some of the some of the nets out there will just take everybody who's on net logger that's on the lurking list. And boom, you're in the log right away. Okay, and that's how they build their list because getting into digital nets is nothing like getting into the HF nets. All right, if you do not leave that three second gap, you don't, you can't talk over each other. It can take 40 minutes to get 20 check ins on a digital net. So, different ways of doing things, respect the NCOs in that way. Uh, K8OWX, uh, Tommy in, in Cuyahoga Falls, he does, he takes five check ins, stops. Works them, takes five check-ins, stops, works them. NEWB, when he does the club net, takes one person. Identifies, recognizes them, then moves on. Okay? Uh, Dixie Trader Net. That's it. Dixie Trader Net. Roger. Okay, this guy, this guy has you, this guy, this guy has you check in with your uh, tactical call sign. Okay? That's it. SLG. All I want to hear is SLG. He says, SLG, go ahead. All right. This is Katie SLG, Nick in Orville, Ohio. Uh, nothing to buy, sell, or trade here at the Dixie Trader Net tonight. And he says, all right, all right, next caller, go ahead. All right. He just takes, he does one person at a time like that. The guy does 90 check-ins in about 75 minutes. It's a trip. Okay. So everybody's going to do their own thing, I guess, is the basis there. So adjust yourself. Don't expect the NCO or the net to work the way that you want it to, just work with the NCOs and the nets as they are presented to you. All right. This is a personal pet peeve of mine. 
How many of you have had to key up multiple times to get into a net? Barometer net in the morning, order breaker net in the afternoon. Hold on, keep those hands up. Look around. All right. You're not special. <laughs> okay. All right. So when you get on the net, you say, I tried seven times to get in. I don't know. What do you want? Fred apologizes. Fred, don't apologize for that. It's not your fault. Okay. Just everybody. Okay. Everybody takes a couple tries. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. What? I wanted to make clear is it's not usually the local net, i.e. barometer net, the beacon net, that I uh, have that hard time getting on, really. It's uh, other nets. Well, well, you know. Some of these nets, if you want to get on, you be the first one. And you be the loudest, and you get on. And that's that's how it works. Well, well you know, I, I don't know. Who, who does the uh, like the free show in the morning there? Jim and those guys. Yeah, Jim and those guys. A few weeks, a few weeks ago, I was uh, relaying information to the club about a sick member. Oh damn. I found like if I got in there early in the morning, he'd tell the neck controller, if he remember. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> see, Fred, that, that goes to my point where you have an expectation of, of a pre show that you hear on the beacon net on a different net. Okay. Now that's going to my buddy Billy Bob in Gurgandy. You know, he just forgets it. But hey, okay. All right, well. Well, you know what? If Jim were here, I'd have him talk to you because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you get whipped with a stick. Okay. So just go on. Same, same with quick keying there, Fred. If you would like to talk to WB8BMW about quick keying, you be my guest, but I'm not doing it, all right? I, don't you tell him, man, I said anything bad. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, no, your secret's safe with me, Fred. Your secret's safe with me, but I'll send him to the YouTube page. Um, all right. So uh, I got one here with a bunch of asterisks. So, all right. So learn your net, learn your NCOs, and adjust, okay? And what was that clapping for there, Dick? Asterisks. Asterisks, mobiles and short times, all right? So this is a point of contention. We're all really, really sharp guys. We play radio, for God's sake, okay? So we've all figured out that if you want to get into the net really quickly, say you're mobile or short time, right? Am I right? Hey, am I right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so... This is respect the NCOs, respect the nets, respect the process, and respect each other. Okay? Short time and mobile. Hey guys, I'm losing my voice here. Short times and mobiles are, that, that space is reserved for people who are short time and mobile. Okay? So, uh, where's Rod, Rod and Wendy? Hi. Uh, Canine now, you see why. All right. So those folks know when they can get into the repeater or not get in the repeater in the morning when they're out on a walk. So let them get in there and have their time. Yeah. When people are mobile, huh? <laughs> 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 See, you guys started talking and you messed up my timing. <laughs> there we go. I want to change slides in. Thank you. There's nothing to see up there anyway, Nick. Um, so reserve that. Okay, when 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 KPMI is driving away from the repeater, or somebody's driving away, that's short time. That's your reason to get in there. That's a short time. That's a mobile. All right. Let's reserve those slots for those people. Okay. Anything to add there, Dick? Yeah. Yeah. When you're short time, it's because 
you're going to arrive at work in three minutes and you've got a bunch of time clock. You can't wait around and listen to somebody else talk because he just wants to, like, you know, go get their breakfast in a half hour. If you're short time, you're short time. If not, please defer to those people who are because they can't change their schedule. If you're going out of repeater range and you're going to be out of range in three and a half miles, you got two and a half minutes to talk. You can't wait for somebody to, to chat about whatever, 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 so they can get to the next net. So if you are short time, if you are mobile, please say so. We will get you in at the top of the net so we can get you in and make your comments. If you're at the brake truck. If you Randy at the brake truck. He's got 10 Randy, minutes. I got oh, that's Randy. Two I got 10 two minutes to put a donut in my yeah. mouth. You got 10 minutes. Mouth. There you go. <laughs> I gotta get back to work. But if, if I have to listen to uh, 15 minutes of comments, I can't get to Rand. All right. And there's another point I was just about to make, okay? If you're that, short time, don't talk for 10 minutes. There you go, okay? Short time is a two way exchange. So if you say come in and say you're short time, you probably shouldn't be buying a nickel, as they say. All right? So, How about a $5 drink? Oh, uh, no, 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 that's a different one. But, um, you know, so if you're short time, not only do we want to get to you quickly, but you should probably want to get off the air quickly, okay? So say your piece and get off the air. It's all right, okay? Short time, short time. Mobiles, mobiles. <sighs> all right, did we beat that dead horse enough? Pretty much. Okay, good deal. All right, so, so respect your NCOs, okay? Respect the processes of the net, whichever net that may be. Respect the club, and I'll tell you why. Because if it was just us in this room, and that's, that was us, okay, then, then we could be, uh, you know, we could be a little uh, shorter, uh, a little less formal with each other, but we're reaching out to the world, okay? I'm going to show you in a second how that works. But uh, respect each other, okay? You're talking over each other and trying to push somebody out of the way so that you can get in. That's not respecting each other. It's not respecting the NCO. It's not respecting the net. It's not respecting the club. Jerry, you hit this one too. Praise in public, punish in private. All right? Spent 35 years of my life trying to teach managers that you don't yell at people out in public and take them in the office. Okay? But... They did something good. Let them know. All right. So I guess what I'm trying to say there is if you don't think the NCOs know that something is an issue or someone is an issue, they do. Don't expect to hear them berating someone on the air to make you feel better about it. All right. And you probably shouldn't join in either. Okay. Just. Know, know that people know that things are going on, so you don't have to do it. Praise the public, punish in private. All right. So you guys can't see crap from this back there. Yes. Before we go to your next slide. Yes. Since you were talking to so much about NCOs. Yes. Last one. Yeah. I just want to say to, to folks, um, you are, everybody is welcome to experience this, to try it out, to see if they like it. It's without committing to anything. If you have any interest at all in how nets run, please come to the NCOs who are in the club. People like Nick, Dustin, myself, Gary, uh, Javen, uh, Fred, uh, and, and Stefan, uh, I'm waiting for you to join our morning. I know, I know. I'm trying. Retire, my I'm trying. Um, he rather and, sit at the truck stop. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and come in and, and try one, and and, and ask us to, to walk you along and stick with you. Uh, we've got like little crutches that we use on our uh, for ourselves, and, and you just have to try it a couple of times to see if it's something that you like and enjoy. And it might be part of the ham radio experience that you particularly like. Uh, and then once you get into that experience, then, then you can like really kind of get an idea of where it's coming from on some ball and stuff because you, you've kind of been there. Um, 
and I just want to say that it's it's an open invitation for for anybody in the, in the community who's interested. You got a lot of support here. And, and uh, I, I think just as Stefan has grown the community with his testing operations here, uh, which I, I have to applaud you for, uh, Stefan. We can, we, we can do, be doing that same pattern with our net control operators all the way up to the Skymore nets. You know, if you've done a couple of barometer nets or a couple of Sarah Club nets, uh, you're ready to do a Skywarn net. It is just coming, getting some habits underneath your your uh, your fingers, gaining a few skills. Uh, so don't be afraid of it. Please join us and become one of our net control operators. Uh, we are we can never not have enough. Nice speech. What's that? You can. Okay. All right. Well, just, I'm sorry, just real, real quick, too. The, the other part about what he was saying about praise in, in public, punish in private, the club leadership does actually attempt to deal with people who misbehave. Um, I have been on the unfortunate role in that for several years, Gary before me. We, we, if you don't make an issue out of the air, it won't spiral out of control. We've talked to people, a lot of people who said, hey, can you quit doing whatever? Yeah. Quit doing whatever. We've had some people, we've asked not to come back. We've had some people we've blocked because they come on digitally. By and large, we can we can fix things, but we do it one-on-one -on -one because people don't feel threatened if we just send an email and said, hey, I heard on the net you know, the last couple of days, you've been doing this, can you look at your mic gain or stop the the whistle noise or you know, whatever it is, right? Well, we, we do actually take care. We try to take care of it, so. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, this is hard for you all to see up there, but this is a bubble chart from the All-Star Notes, okay? If anybody's used it, each of these little bubbles up here, and there are 40 of them, represents an All-Star Note. And... Uh, Ours is connected in there like that. And here, here's what you need to remember. This is one from the Boredom Breaker Net Hub, by the way, uh, which is pretty huge. But this one has 40 nodes connected to it. That's their hub in the middle there. Now, each of these nodes is not necessarily a person, okay? I have one on there. Dustin has one on there. But so do repeaters have nodes too, much like our repeater, 48496, is one of these. Uh, how many people does that represent? Maybe everybody on this room may be on that repeater all at once, right? So you take that, and you got 40 people off of this one, 40 or 50 off of that one, 50 off of that one, 50 off of that one. Then you got another one of these little hubs down here that's actually just like the Border Breaker Hub, the Free Star Hub, or Anzel. Uh, that's the Australia, New Zealand one they attached to us. The do drop in, okay? So another couple of these nodes actually look like this but we don't see it so when i'm saying that it's not just us on the barometer net or on the beacon net or even on the club net it could be all of these people all of this expansion is actually in there with us okay so keep that in mind um when we're doing what we do be professional about it okay so this is sort of what I look at when I'm playing NCO. All right, I use NetLogger. Those of you who, who know about it, uh, that's what that looks like. Uh, I type in the call sign over here. Uh, QRZ fills in the rest. Gives me your name, gives me your nickname, where you live, your uh, grid square, all that fun stuff, okay? Um, I could not play NCO without this. I don't know how you guys uh, do the paper thing. All right, Fred, Chase, I can't read my own writing, okay? I couldn't do it. Um, hey, what's that? I don't know. Somebody's doing attached it? to your, your, mouse. your mouse or something wants to close your mouse. Is that you or is that somebody outside? No, that's not me. Somebody's hacking. You got your laser mouse on the carpet. Yeah, there you go. There we go. There you all go. All right. There, the distraction's gone. 
All right, blue screen. For those of you who ever heard of us talking about the blue screen, that's a little almost instant messaging there. And we chat back and forth in that, send each other messages, have wonderful conversations that are totally wholesome. Uh, okay, so dashboard, this is really hard to see, but these are some of the tools that the NCOs can use to uh, assist them, if you will, especially with the all-star and the digital stuff. This one right here is the what I use for, for the WAWKY, and I'm sorry you can't see it, but it's split up, I can see if somebody's keying up the, uh, the repeater uh, through RF. I can see if somebody's coming in through an all-star node. I can see if they're coming in through an echo link. And to some extent, there is a little bit of control with that. So if something's misbehaving out there, if a node is keying up every 30 seconds with some random noise, or if it's locked open, um, it can be uh, disconnected. As, as Jason said, things happen like that. What I usually do if something's working like that is I will disconnect it for two minutes. I will reconnect it and see if it's see if it's fixed whatever problem it was. And if it's fixed, then it's fine. And if not, um, I, I, I will actually send an email to that address and say, hey, I disconnected you today because your node was making this noise and uh, I took it off. So, you know, and you know what? Most of the time, nobody comes, nobody gets back. So what are you going to do? Or they get back to you and thank you for telling them. I've had a few of those too. Okay, and I've had phone calls. K E L V A. Yeah, Aaron's not here. Um, you know, he's heard my node going uh, going nuts before on the repeater. Looked at his dashboard, said, "Yeah, that's Nick." Texted me or called me and said, "Hey, fix your note." <laughs> All right. Same with the APRS, by the way. I have a habit of knocking that bottom band on the FTM four hundred off of the APRS frequency to one of the repeater frequencies, and then I get a a text message saying, hey, dude, every uh, every 90 seconds, your radio is going, ah. <laughs> And I'm one of four or five people who uses it, so it's pretty easy to narrow it down. Um, this is an all-star list from Border Breaker Hub. For really messy. So I just put that up there as an example uh, of what can go on behind the scenes to make it a little more fun. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. This was... Uh, Dustin, I took this little screenshot yesterday afternoon during the boredom breaker net when we were running the net. And just so you guys know, I run I run two side-by-side -side screens to do this. And uh, there we were. Let's see. We had we had 29 check-ins at that time. And the last one on the list was KE8SFS. Where are you there, Mark? There he is. You win the prize. Um, this was a neat little feature of the, the, the BBN I like. They, they made a, a roster. Okay, and up to the roster, every day it's updated with the number of times you've checked in, with everybody who's checked into it, and you can control F, get the little find function up there, and if you get a partial call sign, you can put it in there, and it will help you determine who that is. That's pretty nifty. All right. All I'm left with is a closing funny okay. of sorts. Does anybody have anything to add? Any questions, problems, concerns? No. No? About nets or anything? Oh, uh, in general, anything. Ask me anything. Oh, I was going to say that, you know, we sell in the uh, track channel, right? If you try to talk, you write it as you talk, and you won't say it like that. You'll let, you know, like if you're saying a call, and you write the call down, and you're saying it at the same time. Guess what? You slow down, they can hear the call better. I will tell you this. One of the reasons that I like check-ins with all that information is it gives me enough time for my sausage fingers to type it into NetLock. Okay? So I can identify you guys as fast as you can rattle off your call signs, but I can't type that fast to keep up with it. Nick? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the repeated drop. You can also pause. Hold your mic down for a second. You know what? I skipped over part of my notes because I thought I was going to go on. And yeah, you're right. And there was something in here I had in here about uh, people doing signal checks or just throwing their call sign out on the repeater randomly. Okay. And that is um, key up for a second or two before you start talking because for everything to work through, 
you, you got to take a little pause or the front front end of whatever you're saying gets chopped off. Okay. So if you're ever listening to the repeater and uh, somebody just throws up, all you hear is SLG. I'm sitting there on my radio wondering, why anybody coming back to me? Go ahead. So, so, so just to be clear, that's not just an all-star thing. No. So, so the way the so the way our repeater controller is programmed, it has an anti chunking feature, where if the repeater has been idle for ten minutes, it will not unsquelch the audio unless you keyed up for more than a half a second. So you actually, if the repeater has been idle and you haven't heard anybody talking because you stopped and listened, like Nick was talking about. You actually have to key the mic for a full half a second before you say anything because the repeater will not open if you just quick key and let go. Because we have way too many people who seem to just want to plunk the repeater to see that it still exists. <laughs> Did I block you from doing that? No. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. You know, I'm king of your chunker, man. I used to ride around on my bike your chunking to see where I could hit the repeater and where I couldn't. <laughs> but, just, but just to be clear, that's not just an all-star thing. That's a local RF right. node because it makes listening to the repeater that much better. Because for whatever reason, we have a lot of we used to have a lot of people that like to just sit there, chukum, 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 like every thirty seconds. It drove me insane. It wasn't me. It was every three or four minutes was me. All right, <laughs> I'll put an exception for you. You're wrong. You know, I've asked you to stop having a QSO so I can chunk the repeater. So, um, yeah, before you close, I just want to re I just want to repeat since you've been focusing on on that etiquette and that control. Uh, there are several of us in the room who have been teachers in our lives. I'm looking at one, uh, and, and a lot of us who have been know that if you really want to master something, teach it to somebody. So, uh, again, I just want to open up an invitation for those who, who like to participate in Nets. If you like to participate in Nets, come in and run some with us. Uh, it, it's, if you have help, there's nothing to be scared of. You're allowed to make mistakes. And, and the whole thing is a learning experience. And once you do that, you have an entire new realm of experience under your belt. Uh, and, and it just makes everything, your experience on that's very, very different. Uh, I started simply uh, back when, um, when Ron was running the Barometer Net six days a week. And I was teaching in school, and I, we would have a Monday holiday. And I'd be off on a Monday. And Ron didn't start the net on Monday morning. And so either me or Jimmy and ASGP would jump in there and run the net for that Monday. And that's how I learned to do it. By hand with a list, and then we get net auger and all this stuff. I, so, I learned it by listening to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I bow. Um, so, yeah, please, if, if you have any interest at all, uh, shake your fears, join us, uh, talk to us. You have lots of encouraging help. Uh, this is a great place to learn. I'll even run that logger for you. You'll get yeah. people to run it with you. You'll have yeah, partners. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah. So, uh, three seconds, well, more than three seconds, but I'm not going to rant or anything, but I love this, what we do. Amateur radio. So let, let, let me let me lift you up a little bit. According to the FCC, this is a service, not a hobby. It's a hobby, man. It's a great hobby, isn't it? But it's a service for reasons of emergency. So what he's telling us is basically, as you learn that control, you may be called into service one day when there's nobody else available. And it's a service once you realize that we're higher than a hobby. It, it truly is what the FCC said. It's a service of the radio system. That's it. All right. So don't just throw your call out there, Katie and SLG, because you're only going to hear SLG. All right. So get up for a second. This is Katie and SLG mobile listening on the 3.9 or on the 2.1. Ron, why is it important to throw that little on the 3 9 or on the 2 1 on there? Some people have a sick radio that is stacked, and if you're not looking at it, 
There you go. And if you're in your car, you don't want to be, get distracted to turn your head and see what you right. or, your mind. Or if you have the scan going on your radio in the car, uh, you need to talk long enough to make the scanner stop. And then it's going to start up again. And if you catch at least it was on the 3.9 or the 2.1, maybe, just maybe, someone will come back and talk to you. I don't know who that would be. Yeah. All right, guys. Here it is, guys. All I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten. Okay? So this is how we're going to end tonight. Real simple. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. All right? Put things back where you found them. Like tables. Clean up like the tables. Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt someone. All right? Wash your hands before you eat. All right, just wash your hands. Flush. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and play and sing and dance and play and work. Every day some, okay? So, uh, yeah, take a nap every afternoon. And uh, when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Here you go, guys. So who's closing tonight? You closing? That's it. Appreciate everybody coming out. Jump. I'll go to side. We do have to put these four yep. chair tables with all their chairs kind of back that way. Um, we have to put this up. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Fred. I thought you I didn't get it done. Maybe I, I, I said that at the beginning, man. Yeah, boy, yeah, you missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, if, 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 there, if there's interest in that, I will. I promise I will do it. Not next week or next month, because Jeff's next month. But if people, I, I, I can do that if you want. I just, I didn't have, guys, I didn't have time to do it tonight. All right. Do they have a kickoff time? You have a foul fingering. Not that you want to do it all. No, no, we're done. No, 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 no. All right. And Ken says he had an announcement. Yeah. Just one real quick announcement. Huh? In case you haven't heard, Summit County Aries has a new repeater up. We put a repeater up in Twinsburg. It's on the county tower in Twinsburg at 220 feet. Uh, so far, it's covering most of uh, Cauga County, somewhat uh, Lorraine County, Geauga County. It covers all of Summit County and probably who knows where else. But uh, uh, Portage. It's, uh, yeah, Portage, some, some Portage, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah, okay, so uh, it's a new repeater. It's on our frequency, 444.55. The PL is 114.8. Uh, give it a try if you'd like, uh, but it's a new repeater for Aries, so that gives us four repeaters now covering Summit County. So that's all I have. Cool, thank you. All right, if you have trash, please throw it away. If you made a mess on the floor, please pick it up, move the tables. We'll see you next month. Please <laughs>